Hi, this is Tom Pizzotto. And Dan Silvestri. From SpyMovieNavigator.com. Join us as we're cracking the code of spy movies. In the new No Time to Die trailer that aired as an ad during the Oscars on February 9th, several new things are revealed. So let's take a quick look. We're just going to look at the differences in this new trailer versus the original trailer and the second official game day spot ad, which was the Super Bowl ad. It begins with Bond and Swan in an embrace, and she whispers to him, this is it. And he echoes back, this is it. Yes, we are left wondering what is the it and why is this happening now? But we do not know. They tell us no more, or do they? Next, you see Bond standing in what looks like a hilltop graveyard. There are mausoleum-type burial vaults in front of him. Or is this a church in a churchyard? Hard to tell. The very next shot... It looks to me like there are are grave sites there. Yeah, there are definitely graves. I'm looking around at all the background stuff because it's beautiful on the trailers. You can just stop it, look at the picture as as a picture, as a photo, and think, ah, okay, what's in the background there? So yeah, it's a graveyard for sure. This very next shot is Bond's hands. Yes, it's Bond's hand. He's wearing a tan suit with a blue shirt while embracing Swan. You see the blue collar above the jacket from the rear. And Bond is holding a note. And Bond is wearing the same suit. And you could see the blue shirt peeking out of his cuff. With a crest on the top of the note, some indecipherable printing on the bottom... And the handwritten words, forgive me. And Bond is holding the note with his right hand and lights it afire with his left hand. That's kind of ominous, isn't it? Yeah, all while he's standing in front of this grave. And the, the, the paper looks kind of new and stuff. It doesn't look like an old paper. It looks kind of new, crisp and a nice. Crush, nice, and nice looking. fresh crease on it and everything. Yeah. So it's probably not that old. So it could have been a current note. Who's okay. saying forgive me? Yeah. I mean, okay, this is big. <laughs> who, who is this note from? Is this another one of Bond's loves gone bad, like Casino Royale? Remember in Quantum when, when Mathis, while he was dying, he tells Bond to forgive her, Vesper he's talking about, and to forgive himself. Is this note along the same lines? Is it from Swan? She did well, something. No, no, actually, you you asked that question. Yeah. Nowhere in this ad do you see Paloma. No, you do not. Could it be from Paloma? We don't the know. The way she's reaching out in the ad. It could be from anyone. Now, it's hard to tell from the writing because we're not handwriting analysts, so it's hard to tell if it's a woman's or man's writing. If Sherlock Holmes was here, he'd be able to tell, but we can't tell. So <laughs> This is Bond, not Holmes, Dan. Yeah, if it's from Swan... She did something that maybe now she regrets and she wishes Bond's forgiveness, much like Vesper? Or is it a note from someone else? It's probably not from Safin. (laughs) He seems to be the real evil one. Probably not from Blofeld. He predicted when her secret came out, it would be the death of Bond. Yeah, and that's that's why I would think it's probably from Swan because her secret might have come out and so now she's saying, forgive me? Yeah, I mean, that might, that would be logical, right? And then I was thinking, wait a minute, what, what if this is from Felix Leiter? He did something. Did Felix betray Bond in this entire mission, setting him up somehow? Oh, I would hope not. Oh, God, me too. Wow, that would that would change. That would change everything. Like the, well, they're advertising yeah, this as this yeah. will change everything. Yeah, that would change everything. So this note is the most intriguing element in this entire 30-second trailer. And whoever the author is will reveal a large chunk of the No Time to Die saga. All right, Dan, let's get back to the shot of Bond standing in that cemetery or the churchyard or whatever that is. Yeah. He's he's looking down at what appears to be a tall burial vault, with, and it looks like there's some dried flowers strewn on the ground in front of it. Yeah, which, I, I looked at that too, and I thought exactly what you're saying. It looked like there were dried flowers. Yeah, like, the, like it wasn't somebody who died just recently. Yeah, that's what I thought, but... So this is one of the things where you were talking about the fact that once you're looking at this thing on your computer, you can actually stop it. You can blow it up and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you blow it up, it actually, they could be kind of fresh. There are heads on the on the flower stems. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought too. And 
I thought, so what is this? Maybe it is recent. Maybe this just happened. Who is buried here? Is Bond lamenting another loss of the key loved one? Swan? Maybe it's Swan. I'm going back. To, I'm going back to Paloma because she hasn't been in this ad at all. Okay. All the other key players you see, you see Blofeld, you see Safin, uh-huh. you see M, you see um, Lashana, you see Swan. I mean, you see everybody but Paloma. Yeah. All right. There's a theory. We don't know, of course. He's staring at this thing. So we're going to analyze this this shot of him standing in front of this grave. Again, in terms of the arc, we know he lost Vesper in Casino Royale and realized in Quantum that Vesper did not betray him but died for him. We do not know in this reboot if he's been married yet, like the Tracy from Honor Majesty's Secret Service. I mean, he's never been mentioned. Yeah, and in the Daniel arc, there's no mention of Tracy ever. Yeah, so we don't know. But here Bond stands with his hands at his sides, looking down, perhaps at an inscription on the stone. Generally, though, when one stands with his hands or hand, her hands at their sides, it means they're not going to fight. Is Bond just giving in here, not fighting what has happened, accepting it? or He's is kind he, of resigned himself to it? Yeah. Has he resigned? Or is he destroyed by it and just is looking totally out of it? He looks sad in this shot. His head is slightly cocked downwards. And again, we looking at this in body language, a head cocked downwards often is a sign of submission. It can also mean because you're exposing the hardest part of your head like animals do in, when they're fighting that you expect a fight. So all yeah, this, these, is a, this is a slight nod. This isn't like he's... No, it's, it, it is. It's slightly tilted downward. But combined with your hands at your side, it may mean conflict. Like, I want to give up, but there's another battle ahead. And I think that's that's what's happening here. I think maybe that's what he's thinking here. He says, okay, it's a stretch, which maybe is the the conflict that he suffered the entire film. You know, having been in retirement, stepping down and quitting, kind of, retiring, and then getting drawn back into the battle. So maybe this is this little shot in front of the graveyard summarizes his entire trauma in, in this entire film. Could be. Could be. It's certainly not him standing there bored. So <laughs> yeah, That's true. <laughs> that's true. He, he may be anticipating something big that must still be done. Or it may indicate that he is truly finished, defeated. But come on, this is Bond. <laughs> but it's a retired Bond that came out of retirement. That's true. And he's older, and we know that. They made a point of that in these in these trailers. You'll also notice in this shot that Bond's left foot is slightly ahead of his right foot. Sometimes that's just a comfort thing, but sometimes it may indicate the direction in which you want to head. Here, it could be into the grave of whoever is buried there, which may indicate maybe he loved and misses the person so much. Wow. Again, a lot in this one shot. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm totally going to disagree with you on this one, Dan. Because- All right. <laughs> with when when you freeze that frame, he is slightly turned toward the camera, barely. Barely. And it looks to me like his feet are kind of in a cross between first and second position in ballet, kind of comfortable standing with the heels in and the the toes pointed out a little bit. Yeah. And I think if he really if it's really a slight angle, I think it's misleading in that I don't think that the left foot's in front of the front. All right, all right. Or in front of the right foot. All right, we're looking at the still shot, and we're seeing a couple of different things. That's the fun of all this, is that people all over the world are seeing different things in this trailer, which is the, <laughs> which is the fun part of all of what we're doing here. What is uh, that beauty is in the eye of the beholder? Yeah. Next, let's look at uh, still another verbal confrontation with Safin and Bond. We remember in the first trailer, Bond telling Safin, history isn't kind to men who play God. I love that line. It is, that is it's a, a great line. Isn't it? It's a great line. So here we see a quick shot of Bond in a tux with people all around him. They almost look like they are backing out of the way to make room for him to walk through this crowd. Well, that's, that's not like you think they're, they are definitely backing away. Yeah. And it, it's kind of weird. Most of the people look rather stern, but that one, one woman on the right of the screen seems to be smiling or maybe she's sneering. 
Yeah, it's and, kind of an interesting little grin she's got on her yeah, face. Yeah, right. It, it, and she's staring at the back of his head, and Bond looks intense. So this is not a, a party he's at. I mean, so we're looking yeah, this, at this. This could be people backing off saying, go ahead, you take care of this one. Yeah, I, I don't know. A second later in this trailer, Safin says to Bond, James Bond, I have made you redundant. Now, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good line. And that's a British term that basically means irrelevant, unnecessary, unneeded. Like when someone gets fired from their job, the British say, your job has been made redundant. It's a form of dismissal. So in a powerful statement, Safin says this to Bond. But Bond quickly retorts, not as long as there are people like you in the world. Okay. Now, I'm going to stop you there for a second. Uh-huh. Because you're saying Bond quickly retorts. Remember, this is an ad. Yeah, well, we don't know how quickly They cut from the one to the other. The blue, there's a blue kind of something behind Safin when he says his line. Yeah. And when Bond talks, he's got something blue behind him. So they might be in the same place. Yeah. But you know how nasty they can be with ads sometimes and how they can try to trick you. Well, that's true. Is this, is this Bond's retort? to Safin or is it for something else that's true we don't know again but with trailers they could put pieces not sequentially of course they could put them anywhere they want they're just trying to intrigue us which apparently they are <laughs> right now and now that is that would sound like a bond comeback though you know not as long as there are people like you in the world yeah it makes perfect it sound sense. like something he could say but yeah I'm not convinced they're not trying to trick us with this one Okay, well, maybe. I mean, that might be the case. But I think it's pretty cool. But I love the line, not as long as there are people like you in the world, because this indicates that Bond believes the fight must go on. And again, we don't know the sequence of these actual clips, like we just said, or if they're all really in the final cut of the movie. We don't really know Oh, that yeah, either. I love that when they do that too. <laughs> no, sometimes that doesn't happen. Put it in the ad or the trailer and yeah. it doesn't make the final. All right. But was this after the graveyard scene? Was it before the graveyard scene? All this is important as well, but both Safin and Bond seem confident in their statements and cocky, in a sense, in this short clip. Notice Safin's head is cocked backwards, indicating confidence. Bond's, his head is straight ahead, eyes blazing, shifting in a nodding and no fashion when he says the words, not as long as there are people like you. He's kind of nodding like no. And so he's cocky, too, and he's confident, and he, he's, he thinks he's right. And that I think he's, in that little statement, he's thinking that good will defeat evil in this world, and the fight will go on. So that's Yeah, that's you definitely good. have two alpha males in this shot. Oh, yeah. And I, I, and I love Rami Malek in this shot. I mean, he's just, like, absolutely perfect in this shot. It's yep. just, like, great. We see the words, like we saw in the last trailer, the 25th film will change everything. Yeah. But in this time, in between the 25th film will change, we see a very short shot of a bare-chested bond there with what appears to be a clothed swan embracing. There might be some explosions in the distant background, torches or lights burning closer to them. We're not exactly sure, and we don't know when the sequence is shot. Why is Bond bare-chested? Is Bond, <laughs> I mean, but yeah, we're not sure. No, right? we're not and sure. what what is going on in the background? We don't know what that is. So the typical James Bond film ends with a villain's lair blowing up and burning. Is that what we've got going on there? I mean, we we really don't know. But if we look close at this image, 21 seconds into the trailer, what do you think it reveals? Yeah, send us your your feedback on this. Again, you can send it through our website. Click the big red button on the on the right of the screen on, on spymovienavigator.com, or you can send us an email. But we yeah, and this was, this was actually one, Dan, that I actually had to look at a couple times because remember I've been saying Paloma isn't in this, isn't in this ad. Mm -hmm. And here the hair is up in a bun. So in all the other shots, Swan's hair is longer. But here the, pick, the hair is up in the bun. But if you actually look at it really closely, you can tell it's her nose. Yeah, And so you can tell it's her. But at first I was wondering, oh, maybe this is what the only thing we're going to see of Paloma. Yeah. But right after the scene is where you see the word everything. Now, yep. 
completing yeah, so the prophecy it, that the 25th film will change everything. And everything gives them a lot of flexibility here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they, they literally could do everything. And Barbara Broccoli hasn't helped with her statements about this because it's like, Arr! you know, you, exactly. no one's going to, no one's going to give us any uh, little morsel of, of anything here, but we're trying to make the most we can of what they're showing us. So then you see this weird, you see a close up of M and he says, come on, Bond. Yeah, but he, he, he doesn't just say, come on, Bond. It's more like, come on, Bond. Like he's rooting him, rooting him on or like, where the hell is he or something like that. I'm not sure which, but it seems like a, there's he, an anticipation there. He seems concerned. And I think, yeah, I think you're right. I think he's wanting Bond to succeed. Whatever is happening, he wants Bond to succeed because it sounds more like that. Like, come on, not not like an off-the-cuff statement, but come on, Bond, do it. You know, like, let's get this done. And then... From there, it, it shoots the same clip we saw before where Bond and, and Nomi shoot out of the plane in that vehicle that the, where the wings expand after it's ejected from the from the plane. It's probably a glider of some type or whatever. And then the words come up on the screen, no time to die again, and boom, the trailer is over. 30-second trailer, but we got some interesting new pieces in this trailer that makes us wonder for 20 or 30 minutes... <laughs> <laughs> about a 30 second trailer again what the heck is going on so now the one the one thing on this trailer though is they did reuse more you know we, we re-saw stuff that we had yes. seen before so for yet another thing we've got him jumping off the bridge holding onto that rope yeah you've got the glider you've got the motorcycle i mean it's like you're you see seeing the db5 stuff. again yeah yeah so you're you're seeing stuff over and over in these trailers and these ads that but really they're, giving are us, like, okay. they're giving us a few new morsels, though, in each, which is, uh, that's the fun of it, right? It's like, okay, I saw well, yeah, that, I saw I, that. I wish ah! we had new morsels every time. Yeah. <laughs> there's, it's like, okay. there's something new. That, so that I think that's pretty good. Up, that glider coming out and opening up its wings was cool the first time. The next time I saw it, I want to see it on a big screen. Yeah, and we will. So that's the kind of fun of it. So again, great job by Ian Productions in, in putting out these trailers. We're all enticed. We all want to see the movie. Come the on, April. The trailers are doing exactly what what they would want the trailers to do. Get us excited, get us hyped up, and wanting to see the movie. So, yeah, come on, April. All right. Maybe they'll release it early. Uh, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got to go to London. This has been Tom Pizzotto. And Dan Silvestri. Thanks for listening. We appreciate it very much. We've had our podcast downloaded from over 44 different countries so far. Thank you guys very much for, for listening to us. Join us as we're cracking the code of spy movies in all of our podcasts and videos and on our website, spymovienavigator.com. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and let us hear from you. We may include your comments in our show. <laughs>